on the Air Force Delta episode, we discussed Konami making a bald-faced Ace Combat ripoff, getting away with it simply because the Dreamcast had no actual Ace Combat games, or really any sort of flight combat simulations of any kind, especially in its first year. While there wasn't a lot of survival horror in the first six months of the Dreamcast console's release, for publisher-slash-developer Jaleco's Carrier, a blatant riff on the formula established and pushed forward by the legendary Resident Evil series, the issue is, not only was there a brand new, exclusive Resident Evil game coming out for the Dreamcast, Resident Evil Code Veronica came out within one month, a scant 30 days after Carrier's release. Resident Evil's existence is both the best and worst thing to happen to Carrier. Since the familiarity allows players acclimated with the famous series to pick this one up basically immediately, since it's essentially identical structurally with only a few fresh little details. But also, since it is exactly the same structurally as a Resident Evil game, it's all the more noticeable that it's definitely deficient in several key ways. The game begins, amusingly, in Spring 2023, and tells the story of two members of a special forces team known as Spark, Jack Ingalls, and, uh, Jessifer Manning. They've been sent to investigate what's going on with the people on an aircraft carrier giving a distress signal, a group that includes Jack's younger brother. As the helicopter lands, a surprise attack separates the two, and you begin as Jack trying to figure out what's going on, which, as you might have guessed from its Resident Evil forebears, involves wave after wave of mutants transformed by a deadly virus. Two things are noticeable about Carrier immediately upon beginning play. First of all, this game's backgrounds are fully rendered 3D. Compared to Resident Evil and a lot of games that had pre-rendered pictures that your 3D character could walk around in. The full animation looks nice and is especially noticeable on a big 4K TV, on something bigger and sharper than the Dreamcast was even intended to be played on. Those little graphical touches feel like a nice point towards Carrier and the Dreamcast's hardware. The other thing that is immediately noticeable when you start this is that this game sports the exact same tank controls, where you spin in place and then walk forward as the camera finds dramatic angles throughout, as it does in Resident Evil. This control scheme is not particularly popular there either, but in Carrier, Jack's default movement is sprint, so I found myself shooting past doors and gates and pretty much everything pretty much non-stop. I was actually excited bordering on relieved when I got injured, because it makes you limp around more slowly, which hilariously allowed me to navigate more easily because it made my character walk at a regular f***ing speed. In fact, the only thing you can't shoot past is enemies, who are completely immovable, unavoidable impediments once they're on the ground, which was made worse when it turns out they eschewed the Resident Evil auto-aim hitboxes, which there basically had three positions, high, low, and baseball strike zone. Carrier instead gives a full 180 degree up and down radius, which sounds cool until it makes it impossible to specifically aim at anything, especially these ankle-biter zombies. I did appreciate that Carrier did not ask me to do a lot of weapon inventory maintenance, which is one of my least favorite parts of any Resident Evil. But also, there's not much excitement in finding things other than key cards, which makes far too much of the game feel very samey. I appreciate that the game does not have some of Resident Evil's tedious, sometimes inscrutable puzzles, and the one tool it has that is fun is a scope called the BEM-T3 that allows you to see invisible zombies, 
as well as discern if people are infected, and even see through walls sometimes. A first-person perspective in the style of survival horror is so rare that it was cool that it was also useful. As far as lower-tier survival horror games go, the choices on the Dreamcast are, of course, quite scant. And the only other one, as of Carrier's release, is the launch title, Blue Stinger. And I will say, Carrier is a better game than Blue Stinger. It also involves a lot of annoying backtracking and bad combat, but it's playable and consistent. Because of that, it is not even 1% as interesting to talk about as Blue Stinger, since it's pretty repetitive and situated well within the genre tropes as opposed to Blue Stinger, which might be described more accurately as deliriously unhinged. Seriously, if you haven't watched that episode, go check it out. That game is out of its mind. Carrier's music is also much more on the lines of classic Resident Evil spooky moods than Blue Stinger's psychotic, blaring symphony orchestra. The dialogue is also mostly okay, something that most of the Resident Evil games of its generation never got very good at. I also do like the ridiculous squishy sound effects when you're walking through blood. One thing that is weird is whatever this noise is that plays when you pause the game. Listen in. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what, if anything, that's supposed to be saying. But it made me never want to pause the game, ever, because it happened so often. Ultimately, if Carrier was on a system where no Resident Evil games came out on, it would be a totally acceptable replacement. It wouldn't be a very good rental because it's really long. But even with its weird foibles, its wonky walking speed, its repetitive gameplay, its bad combat aiming, its goofy voice acting, even with all that, it's an okay game. If you're a fan or veteran of old-school survival horror, like me, quirky controls and bad acting is just par for the course. But seriously, there's a real Resident Evil game coming down the pipe literally four episodes from now. And if you can just get a can of Coke pretty soon, chances are you're not coming back to that case of Diet Shasta Cola sitting in the garage. Carrier never had a chance. Next time, you ever been watching WALL-E and thought, man, I wish this was set in the desert, and I wish WALL-E didn't have any distinctive personality. Also, I wish he didn't have any particular emotional or narrative goals. No? Well, Rockstar has...